Chapter 9, Intersections of Lines and Planes. This is a practice test for you. So hopefully by now you've done all the lessons and you know how everything works. So let's see how smart you are. You can um, go and download the test that I will give the link to, or you can just follow along, write the questions out and do your, your solution and test and check with mine. Um, you might notice here there's these question marks up here. It's just because there was a different um, program. These are supposed to be... Um, lines over top like vector lines so don't be confused by those question marks like I was when it printed out. Okay so obviously I was really nice here to my students and I gave them the distance equations that you will use later on in the test. So question one asks you to determine the point of intersection of the following lines. So it's not about memorizing all these things right because I know to find a point of intersection I'm trying to find out where x, y, and z are the same for each of these, right? Because that's where they intersect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the parametric equations for two of the variables. I'm going to do x and y. I'm going to solve for s and t, and then I'm going to find um, what x, y, and z are once I know what um, s and t are. Okay, so for the first equation here, I have x is equal to one minus, or one, can't see, 1 plus s. And for this one here, I have x equals minus 1 plus 2t. I have my hand in the way. And I'm going to say y is equal to 3 minus 2s. And this y is going to be equal to minus 7 plus 3t. Okay, so I'm going to set these equal to each other. And then I'm going to have two equations with two unknowns. So 1 plus s is equal to minus 1 plus 2t. So rearranging, I'm going to have 2t minus s is equal to 2. And for the y's, I'll do that one over here. I have 3 minus 2s is equal to minus 7 plus 3t. So I want to arrange it so it's the same, same order as this one so I can line them up. So I'm going to have 3t plus 2s is equal to, so 3t plus 2s, I'm bringing this to the other side, so that's going to be equal to positive 10. So here's equation 1 and equation 2, just like in grade 10. Now I want to eliminate, so I have 2t's, 3t's, minus s, 2s, I'm going to multiply this equation by 2. Equation 1 times 2, and I'm going to write it right underneath this one so that I can add them together. Okay, so remember everything by 2, and then now I'm going to eliminate these, so that means I'm going to add the, equa the equations together. So that's going to give me 7t is equal to 14, and t is equal to 2. So now I've got a t value. I want to know what an s value is, so I'm going to plug t is 2 here and solve for s. So 2, I'm going to say, I'll write something here so you see. When t is equal to 2, 2 times 2 minus s is equal to 2. So 4, I'm going to bring the s over here, 4 minus 2, so I get s is equal to 2 as well. So now that I know that s is 2 and t is 2, and I want to find, I want to find the point, right? So if I go back up here, when s is 2, x would be 3, right? So x is equal to 1 plus 2 equals 3. Now you should get the very same answer if you plugged it in here, right? Minus 1 plus 4, that's also 3. Hooray, we're right. And y is going to be 3 minus 2 times 2. So that's 3 minus 4 is minus 1. And the same thing here, if I plugged in t is 2, I'd have minus 7 plus 6, that's also minus 1. So you can double check your answer. So I need to have a parametric equation for z now. So z is going to be equal to minus 14 plus 5s, or I could have used this one, z equals minus 2 minus t, which is probably the easier one. But that's okay, we're going to check them both. So minus 14 plus s is 2, so that gives me minus 4. And this one here, if I do minus 2 minus t, so that's minus 2 minus 2 
is minus 4. So therefore, the point of intersection, point of intersection is x, y, and z. And there you go. Okay, so don't get too confused. Just, you know, stop and think for a minute what you're supposed to be doing here. Okay, number two, it says determine an equation for the line of intersection of the planes. So to find the line of intersection of a plane, the first thing I want to do is I want to eliminate one of the variables. So we have um, one y here, two y's here. So I'm going to multiply this equation by two. So question equation one times two, we'll call this equation one here, and this is two. So I'm going to multiply by that by two. It's going to give me 10x plus 2y plus 4z plus 30 equals zero. And I'm going to write the other equation right underneath it because I'm going to try some elimination here. I'm going to get rid of the y's. See how nice that's going to be. Okay, so now I'm going to... We have the same signs here, so we need to subtract. Put a minus sign out there so you don't forget. And that gives me 6x plus z plus 25 is equal to 0. So that means that z is equal to minus 6s minus 25. Okay, so we're going to let, um, in this case, let's let x be equal to t. Remember, you have to set one of the variables equal to um, the parameter t. So if I let x equals t, that gives me, um, this was x, wasn't it, when I say s. So that means z is minus 6t minus 25. So remember, this would be like the point coordinate, and this is your um, direction vector number, minus 6, for z. Okay, so if x is t, x equals t, that means the point will be 0, and the, so if I were, if I were to start writing out the, um, the equation of the line, I would already have some things here, right? I have 0, and I need y and z. And for z, I have minus 25. And I have t times um, x. We have 1t, so we have a 1 here, and we have a minus 6 here. So we just have to find the z part now. So how am I going to find, how am I going to, sorry, I've got to find the y values. How do I find y? Well, I plug everything back into one of the equations. I'm going to choose this one here because the numbers are a little easier to work with. And I'm going to have x being t and I'm going to have z being minus 6t minus 25. So sub that in very carefully. So sub x equals t and z equals minus 6t minus 25. So I'm going to plug that all in here and we're going to get 4t plus 2y. Remember, we're trying to solve for y, so that's okay. And we have 3 times minus 6t minus 25 plus 5 equals 0. Ooh, almost ran out of room there. Okay, so expand and simplify. Very nice, easy to do here. So I have minus 18t minus 75 plus 5 is minus 70 equals 0. So that gives me 2y is equal to 14t, because I had minus, I bring it over, and then I have plus 70. So y is equal to 7t plus 35. So that means this is my coordinate, 35. So you didn't see that before. I didn't let you see it. So 35 and 7. And there you go. There's your equation of your line of intersection is the line of intersection. I always answer your question. Teacher likes it when you do that. And you can make a happy face. Okay, so that's page one. Let's go to page two.
page two here, flip it over, and we have prove that the following two lines are skew and explain what that means. Okay, so remember for the lines to be skew, it means that um, first of all, the they can't be parallel. So if you look at the direction vectors here, so we have one, two, three, two minus one minus one, they, they're not scalar multiples, so they're not parallel. So the first thing I want to do is I want to um, write out the parametric equations again. So I have x is equal to five plus s, and y is equal to minus four plus two s. And on this side, I have x equals 2 plus 2t, and y is equal to minus t. So I'm doing the very same thing I did in the last question. So I found two e the parametric equations, and I'm going to prove to you that I'm not going to get the same value for my x, y's, and z's. So I can solve two equations with two unknowns, but the third equation has to also work. If it doesn't, then that means they're skew. So that means what I'm trying to show here in the end, that the values of z, like in the previous question, this one here, when we found z, we had these were the same value. So that meant there was a point of intersection. Now it was kind of nice because the question asked you that. But if these numbers are different, then the, the lines are skew, which means they're not parallel, they have distance between them and they never intersect. So let's go back here and we're going to set um, x, we're going to set these two e to each other, these to each other, and we're going to solve for s and t again. So I have 5 plus s equals 2 plus 2t. So um, let's do, uh, I always want to know, do I want to do the S or the T? Do I want to, how do I want to write this? It doesn't really matter. Um, let's do S minus 2T, and that's going to be equal to minus 3. And so for this one here, um, I think I copied down a wrong question here. X equals 2 plus 2T, two Y equals, Y equals minus T. Oh, that's right. Okay, so let's do the y. So I have minus 4 plus 2s is equal to minus t. So 2s plus t is equal to 4. Okay, so I'm off by a factor of 2 here, right? So I'm going to multiply this one by 2. This is my first equation. And this one, I'm going to do equation 2 times 2. So I can have... I'd have 2s minus 4t equals minus 6. Okay, now I'm going to subtract. That's going to eliminate these. And be careful because 1 minus minus 4 is 5, and 4 minus minus 6 is 10. So that means t is going to be equal to 2. So let's go back over here. So when t is equal to 2, s minus 2 times 2 is equal to negative 3. So that gives me minus 4. I add 4. So s is going to be equal to 1. So if s is 1 and t is 2, then I will have the same x and y's. But what happens to the z's? So now I need to write out the parametric equations for z for each of the lines. So that z is minus 2 plus 3s. So if s is 1, that means I have minus 2 plus 3 is 1. And for this is for line 1. And so for line 2, I have z is equal to 1 minus t. And t is 2, so that's 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So because these are not the same, that means the lines are skew. So... Um, you should write something like values for z, for z are not the same, are not equal. Equal sounds better, right? Therefore, lines are skew. Skew. And that means not parallel and not 
intersecting. Okay, so remember we talked about that before. A skew line is something kind of like this, right? These are going like that. They're never going to intersect and they're not parallel. Okay, number four, it says determine the distance between the point P and the given line. So using your distance formula, so we have D equals the magnitude of PQ crossed with the normal over the magnitude of the normal. Okay, so the only thing we have to do first here is we need to find a PQ, because we have P, so let's call this point here Q. So PQ, vector PQ is going to be um, 2 minus 9 is minus 7, so we have minus 7, 6, and minus 2. And if we do the cross product of PQ, so PQ crossed with N is going to be um, PQ, so we have minus 7, 6, minus 2 crossed with the normal, which is this here, 1, 3, minus 5. Okay, so you might want to do that over on the side. So we have minus 7, 6, minus 2, minus 7, 6, minus 2. We have 1, 3, minus 5, 1, 3, minus 5. Get rid of the outsides, make your x's, multiply down, subtract up. So the cross product is going to be uh, minus 30, um, minus 6 is minus 36, and we have minus 2, minus 35 is minus 37, and we have minus 21, minus, minus 21, minus 6. No, it's plus 21. This should have been, was that a minus 3? Oh, yeah, that's why it's not working out nicely for me. That was a minus 3 here. Oh, when you make mistakes with minus signs. Okay, let's try that again. So that's minus 30. Minus 6 is minus 36. I thought I had a mistake here, but I knew this was the answer. And then we have minus 2, minus, or minus 35 is minus 37, and 21 and minus 6 is going to be 15. There we go. Okay, so the distance now is going to be the magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude of this vector is going to be the square root of, we have to square these crazy numbers, minus 36 squared plus minus 37 squared plus 15 squared and in the denominator, we have the magnitude of the normal. So that's the square root of 1 squared plus minus 3 squared plus minus 5 squared. Make sure you put your lines right over. And um, I'm just going to tell you what that is. It comes out to the square root of 2890 over the square root of 35. Okay, so I guess you could um, you could say it's this in units, or you could get out your calculator and evaluate it. it depends on uh, on what your teacher likes, right? Okay, number five it says determine the distance between the two planes. So the distance between two planes is a x plus b y plus c z plus d. So the magnitude of that, that just means it has to be positive, right, over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay, so if you look at these two planes, you can see that the normals are 3 minus 1, 6, 3 minus 1, 6, but the last values are um, different. So it means they're parallel but distinct. Okay, so I'm going to, I have to find a point because I have A, B, and C, and I could use one of the Ds. So let's find the point on one of the planes. So let's choose this one. We have to find a point on one plane, because we can't do it otherwise. Find a point on one plane. So 
let's use um, let's use this one right here. So let's say when um, when x is zero and z is zero, then y would be two, right? So I could use zero. Um, it would be minus two. Zero minus two and zero. So if I made this zero, this zero, I'd have minus y minus two equals zero, minus y equals two, y equals minus two. Okay, so that's a point on the plane. And so I'm just going to write out here, I'm going to say, well, x is going to be zero, y is going to be minus two, and z is going to be zero. And a is going to be, you have to take it from the other plane, okay? Because if you don't, you're not going to get any distance because you'll be finding the distance distance from the point to its own plane. Okay, so if you get a if you get zero, then you know you've made a mistake. So a is three, b is minus one, c is six, and d is minus ten. So now I'm just going to plug that all into this equation here. So d is going to be equal to the magnitude of three times zero plus minus one times minus 2 plus 6 times 0 minus 10 all over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So that's going to be 3 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 6 squared. Right? Okay, and if you do all that, you'll get the magnitude of minus 8 over the square root of 46 and of course this is just going to be 8 over root 46 and that's units. You should always check to see if your radical could be written as a mixed radical. In this case 46, nothing divides nicely that's a perfect square, right? I divide 2 and I've got 23. Bam. Okay, so we're just moving along here. So now we're on to question number 6. It says explain the use of the triple scalar product, what it is and how it is used to determine how three planes intersect. So the triple scalar product, TSP, is, we worked with the normals. Remember we did the dot product of N1 with the cross product of N2 and N3. Like that. Now, I'm not going to write it all down, but I'll explain it. The triple scalar product, you use it when you have three planes. You take the normals of the planes, A, B, and C coefficients, that's what they are, and plug them into the equation. If you get zero, the volume of the parallel pipette is zero, so they are parallel or they could intersect as a line. If you don't get zero, the planes intersect at a single point. Okay? So we're going to do that here for this. We're going to perform a triple scalar product on these planes, then find their point of intersection using matrices. So that's a hint to tell you that the triple scalar product is going to be, it's going to have a value. It's not going to be zero. So the first thing you should do is write out the normals. So we have one minus two and four. Uh, normal two here is two, four minus one. And normal 3 is 3, 4, and 2. Okay, so we're going to do the cross product of, um, well, like it doesn't really matter which ones, but we said 2 and 3, so let's do that. Let's do 2, 4, minus 1, 2, 4, minus 1, and 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 2. I didn't make any mistakes with any negative signs this time. Okay, always be careful of those negative signs. They even get this have rot upset. Okay, so N2 crossed with N3. Make sure you write down what you're doing. Like, don't just throw some numbers here. It's important that your teacher knows what you're doing. Like, equals, that's kind of a nice thing. So we have 8 and minus minus 4 is 8 plus 4 is 12. And then you have minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7. And we have 8 minus 12 is minus 4. Okay, so there's my, my cross product. And now the TSP is going to be N1, which is 1 minus 2 and 4. And we're going to dot it with 12 minus 7 and minus 4. 
Okay, what are we going to get when we do that? We're going to get 12 plus 14 minus 16, and that is minus, that's actually positive 10, right? 10. Okay, so therefore intersects at one point, which is what they said it was going to, but maybe your teacher won't be so nice and tell you that. Okay, so then it says to find the point of intersection using matrices. Okay, so matrices are fun. We're going to make up our first matrix here using the coefficients. Remember, so we have 1, minus 2, 4. We're going to make a line. We're going to write minus 4. And we have 2, 4. Always check to make sure they're in the same order, like x, y, z, because you want to make sure you set it up properly. It's kind of hard to talk sometimes and write things down without making mistakes. That's my excuse and I'm sticking with it. Okay, so this is in a nice order. Look, we have a one in the first position and we want to get a zero right underneath it. So we're going to do row two minus two row ones. And I'll do lots of steps. I won't miss anything here for you. We'll do one at a time. Okay, so I have 1, minus 2, 4, and minus 4. And we're going to subtract two of these. So 2 minus 2 is 0, hooray, I've got that one. And 4 um, minus 2 times this one, 4 plus 4, that's going to give me 8. And minus 1 minus 8 is minus 9. And that's a 9, so that's going to be 9. Um, plus 8 is going to be 17. Okay, so I could have done 2 and 1, but we won't. Okay, so, and now we're going to do row 3 minus 3 row 1s. Row 3 minus 3 row 1s. Okay, so we're going to leave these two alone. 0, 8 minus 9 and 17. And we're going to subtract 3 of these. So 3 minus 3 is 0. And 4 plus 6 is going to be 10. And 2 minus 12 is going to be negative 10. And 8 plus 12 is going to be 20. Okay, so right here you should um, simplify this. They're all divisible by 10. So I'm going to do row 3 divided by 10. And that's going to give me 1, minus 1, and 2. Keep your numbers nice and easy. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to get a 1 here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do row 2 minus 7 row 3s. Okay, so row 2 minus 7 of these. So write out your first row again, leave it alone. And I'm going to subtract this minus seven times this one. So eight minus seven is going to give me that beloved one that I want. And minus nine plus seven is going to give me minus two. And 17 uh, minus 14 is going to give me three. And I have zero 1, minus 1, and 2. And now you can see I only have to, I've got, I need a 0 here. So I'm going to do row 3 minus row 2. So row 3 minus row 2, because I need a 0 here. So remember you do it in this order. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so leave this row alone. We haven't done anything with it at all, have we? And I have 0, 1, minus 2, 3. Now, here we go. Row 3. 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. And minus 1 minus minus 2 is plus 1. And 2 minus 3 is minus 1. And now I have the first answer here. I'd have z equals minus 1. So this tells me z equals minus 1. And now you write out, what does this line say? So this is y minus 2z's 
equals 3. So plug in minus 1 here. y minus 2 times minus 1 equals 3. So that's plus 2. Bring it over here, minus 2. I get y is equal to 1. And x, so here, x minus 2y's plus 4z is equal to minus 4. And I have um, x minus 2 times 1 plus 4 times minus 1 equals minus 4. So that's minus 2 minus 4 more is minus 6. I add it. That's going to give me x is equal to 2. So there's the coordinates of your point x, y, and z. Therefore, point of intersection is, I have 2, 1, minus 1. Whoops. That's a 1 and a minus 1. Okay, so that's how you would do that question and find the point of intersection. The last part is kind of theoretical a little bit here. It says, you perform matrix operations and come up with the following solution. solutions. What does this mean in terms of how the planes intersect and what would be your solution? Okay, so I look at the bottom line here, and this is just like the one we just did, right? We have z is equal to 6. So this means that the, the planes are going to intersect in a point. So now what you're to do is sub, like reverse substitution here. So I have y minus 3z equals minus 1, y minus 18 equals minus 1, y is equal to 17. And I have x plus 2y plus z is equal to 2. I'm getting that right from here, right? And I know y, so x plus 2 times 17 and z is 6, so that's 34, and 6 is 40, 2 minus 40, x is minus 38. So point of intersection is minus 38, y was 17, and z, whoops, I meant to put a comma there, not a bracket, and z is 6. There you go. Okay, number nine, it says you perform matrix operation, come up with this solution. What does this mean in terms of how the planes are sick? And what would be your solution? Obviously, the formatting gets all screwed up when you bring files from different programs. Okay, so what does this say? This says zero times z equals minus one. Well, we know that's impossible, right? Impossible. It's impossible. Okay, so if this is not possible, the planes do not intersect and there is no solution. Planes do not intersect. No solution. Okay, what if it was a line? Well, that means you'd have to have something here, you know, like... Um, 1 equals 0. You could have 1, 1 here and a 0 here. So that would mean 1z is equal to 0. So that would give z an infinite number of solutions, right? And that would mean it would be a line. Look back at that lesson that I did for you with all those different possibilities. Okay, number 10. Explain how the following pairs of lines intersect. Okay, so you want to have a quick look at them here. And you can see that the normal here is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And this one is 2, 2, 2. So that's double that one. And even this is 2 times it. So what does that tell you? It means they're parallel and coincident. In other words, they're just the same planes. So they're right on top of each other. Right? Right like that. Okay, this one here, the normals are 2, minus 1 and minus 2, and this is minus 1, 2, and 1. Okay, so that's very different. Um, do they intersect as a point or a plane or a line? They intersect in a line because they're not parallel. Intersect in a line not parallel. Okay, remember this is only two 
planes intersections, not three. So we don't have that single point. Remember, two planes, they can only either intersect, they can only be parallel and distinct, parallel and coincident, or intersect as a line. Two planes. Okay, number 11, it says when you have three planes, there are four ways that there can be no solution, meaning that the planes are inconsistent. Sketch three ways that this can happen. So if you go back to um, the nice little diagram I did for you, you could have something like this where you have the triangle, the prism in the middle through the planes. This would be one example. It's better to look at my, my other drawings when I um, you know spend a lot of time drawing them for you rather than this. You could have something like this with um, these are coincident and the, the third plane is parallel. So these are two two sheets of paper on top of each other and one floating above it, right? So it'd be like the floor, the rug on it, and the ceiling. And the third one could be, you could have something like this. I'm not very good at sketching, which I'm a really bad artist. Photography, yes. Sketching, no. Okay, so this way we have um, inconsistent. Now remember that that whole description about the planes being inter uh, inconsistent means there the three planes aren't intersect intersecting. It doesn't mean you can't have two of them intersecting. It just says all three have to. So that's inconsistent. So that's the end of the chapter nine practice test. That's the last of your practice tests for vectors. And um, I'll have one more little video for you with um, some handouts for the at the end of the chapter, there's a really long um, summary of vectors with lots of questions, and I'll have a little present for you there. Bye for now.